What's happening, everyone? Ed from Texas. Welcome to Setup Boys, episode two. What's happening, everyone? Ed from Texas. Wars. Welcome back to another Setup Wars episode. You know, since we showed off some Ultimate Boomer setups a few episodes ago, I think it's only fair we show off some Ultimate Teen setups this time around. If you guys want to participate on the show, make sure to watch the video link down below. But with that said, sit back and relax because it's time for Setup Wars. Are you wearing protection when you're having fun on the internet? Because if you're not, you're putting yourself at risk for all kinds of malicious cyber attacks. Atlas VPN uses military grade encryption protocols that help mask your IP address and protects you while you're online. A VPN will give you that peace of mind that no one is watching you or trying to steal your data. I use Atlas VPN to stream Netflix shows that aren't available in my country. Can you believe Rick and Morty isn't available in America? I have to switch to UK servers just to watch one of my favorite shows. If you're in the same boat as I am, you too can use Atlas VPN to unlock geo-blocked streaming in your country. They also offer unlimited simultaneous connections across Windows, Mac OS, Android, and iOS while offering 86% off for my subscribers. This offer won't last long, so make sure to click the link down below and grab it while it's hot. Kicking off the episode is Graham from the US who is an active member on my Discord server and this is the setup he uses for gaming, schoolwork, and listening to music. We got an awesome quad display setup using what appears to be my grandmother's knitting desk. All jokes aside, the presentation of the setup looks awesome on the top half and then it kind of just blends into the background with the desk being the center of attention. I talked a little bit about this in a previous episode where the desk is the foundation of every setup and it can either make or break any setup. So choosing the perfect desk can set the stage for everything else to fall in place. I feel like a white or even a black desk would have looked really good with this setup. But again, I understand that not everyone can go out and buy a new desk. Graham, in fact, is using an old work desk, which is understandable. This advice is more so for people who are building a brand new setup from scratch to really think about what desk is going to match your setup's theme as well as provide some functionality. We got triple 22 inch Dell monitors with a 27 inch up top as an overhead. I just love how he purposely lowered the top monitor just a little bit to cover the bottom chin. With the exception of the desk, it looks like he was going for a white and black color scheme. He's rocking a G-Skill KM360 keyboard with HyperX keycaps paired with the G305 mouse. I also like that he positioned the mouse pad sideways so that he can easily route the cable underneath the keyboard and through the desk. Well done. For audio, he's using the Bayer Dynamic DT770 Pros that he has hooked up to his FX audio deck and a Blue Yeti that's hooked up to a boom arm. But take a look at the speaker placement, you guys. He didn't have any extra space on the desk for his speakers, so he custom made some out of a few rails and he attached them to the monitor arm using a C-clamp. This is a clever way of making room for your speakers if you don't have enough space on your desk. The PC power in the setup is looking pretty swanky. We got an old white build inside the NZXT H510 case with the 9600KF and an ASUS Strix 1660 Super. Pretty sweet setup to start off the show. Thank you Graham for entering and thank you for being active on the server. Coming at number two is Jafar from Seattle who was previously featured in episode 212. He's the one who had this epic gaming room and entertainment area with tons of Funko Pops. This is where he watches movies and games on all three of his consoles. Console setup hasn't changed much. We still got the 65 inch 4K TV from Vivo and the four glass shelves holding up all of his collectibles. The biggest change is actually his main setup. Ladies and gentlemen, we are officially welcoming Jafar to the PC Master Race. He finally swapped his MacBook with a custom gaming PC that is now powering his new setup. He even picked up an extra monitor. So now he's rocking a 27 inch Lenovo display in vertical mode, in addition to another 27 inch 280 Hertz display, which is the main gaming monitor. This guy made a full 180 degrees switch. He even picked up the popular and pro two keyboard and an RGB mouse pad. He's officially a true gamer, but I do want to take a closer look at his first ever custom PC. And of course it had to be in the Lee and Lee dynamic O11 case. I feel like everyone and their grandmothers are building in this case now, but what's really impressive here is that he managed to get one of the Nvidia 30 series cards. He's rocking the 9900K 
with the Gigabyte RTX 3080. This guy went from 0 to 100 real quick. I also want to take this time and appreciate Jafar for actually going with the correct fan configuration in this case. He definitely did his research and knows what he's doing. Well done on this epic PC and awesome setup and congrats again for joining the PC Master Race. This next setup looks like it belongs in a vintage museum. This is Jonah's rustic themed setup with a hint of vintage. I just love how the bricks in the background blend so well with the wooden desk and ceiling. It looks like they put my man Jonah in the attic, it seems. But honestly, I would choose his location over an actual bedroom. I feel like it's more isolating up there in the attic. I could picture myself locked up here, away from all the noises from the house. You know, no vacuuming noises, siblings fighting over who gets to watch Blue's Clues or Dora the Explorer, and even cheek clapping from the bedroom. It'll be nice and quiet up here in the attic. I'm actually jealous. So this is the setup Jonah uses for 2D and 3D animation with a bit of video and photo editing as you can see from this image, but he also games on his spare time. He's rocking dual 21 inch vertical monitors that are sandwiching his 32 inch 1440p display in the middle, and it looks like he mounted old monitors to his custom made desk. The hint of vintage comes from his ASIO Retro Classic keyboard that has his cool typewriter theme to it, and since this is mostly a productivity setup, he uses an MX Master 2 mouse instead of an actual gaming mouse. You know, I do want to take a moment and just say thank you for these quality pictures. I just love it when someone spends some extra time to take high quality pics like this. You know, it just makes the show so much better. And as a viewer, I'm sure it's more enjoyable looking at these crisp photos. So thanks again. Since you're placing your speakers sideways like this, it would be a great idea to pick up some isolation pads to help with the vibrations and also to prevent your speakers from getting scratched. You can always cut some of these larger ones to size if needed. The cable management on this setup is immaculate. He attached a very long power strip underneath the desk and plugged everything in there with the help of cable clips and cable ties. I couldn't be more proud. Actually, I could. He even hooked up his Nintendo Switch docking station under the desk with a GameCube controller adapter so he can easily plug those in from the front and play on a Switch. Pretty clever. And finally, finishing off with his custom mini ITX PC featuring the 2700X and the RTX 2070 Super. It's a pretty cool build, but it could use some cable combs to clean it up a bit. But what can I say? I think this setup is something else. I can't really wrap my head around what I'm feeling because it's so different than the other gaming focused setups on the show. It's not flashy with a bunch of RGB lighting. Nothing is overdone. I just feel like everything is perfectly balanced in all the areas. I'm also loving those custom wallpapers you made for your monitors. Well done, man. An excellent setup. Thanks for the high quality pictures and thank you for sharing this with us. Speaking of setups and addicts, here's a gaming and streaming setup from Josh. He's rocking triple 27 inch monitors that he mounted on the CTF black and red gaming desk. I guess this is one way of doing a triple monitor setup without having the space for it. You can always mount it to your desk and have the outer displays hanging off like that. The only things on the desk are his speakers and the Ducky 1 2 mini keyboard paired with the Razer Mamba Elite. You know, I feel like given the space limitations, he still managed to actually make this setup work. He mounted a boom arm for his microphone on the actual monitor arm to hide it from view, but also to extend the reach at the same time. Since you don't have any extra space on the desk for your second headset, you can always pick up a simple hook like this and mount it behind one of your monitors. That way it's off the ground and closer to you. I do see that you made an effort in at least tying the cables together with some zip ties, but you could have cut the excess pieces off and use a smaller cable sleeve to cover them up. Another thing I noticed is that your PC is sitting on carpet without anything in between. You know, you could take the budget approach and just put a piece of wood under your PC or something solid and flat that you have lying around your house. Or if you have about 20 bucks to spend, I would pick up this PC caddy instead. Not only will it keep your PC off the ground, preventing dust buildup, but you can move your PC around much easier if you ever need to access the back. And one more final thing about your PC. You have the memory sticks installed in the wrong slots. You're not taking advantage of dual channels, so I would move the first memory stick one slot over to the left. You know, given your age, this is a pretty awesome setup, but it's very obvious that you have much to learn. I have no doubt that you will pick up some very helpful tips and lots of experience throughout your setup journey. Thank you for entering. Wrapping up the episode is Macklin from British Columbia, Canada and his insane battle station. So he's a high school student and this is the setup he uses for gaming and schoolwork. Believe it or not, but this is mostly a console gaming setup that's being powered by his Lenovo laptop. 
He has that hooked up to triple monitors and a 55 inch 4K TV up top. However, he mostly games on a center 22 inch monitor with his PlayStation 4. He has an HDMI switch connected to the laptop and the PS4, so all he has to do is press a button to switch between the two. Even though it's a laptop powered setup, Michaelin is also using peripherals with his PS4. He's got the Eagle Z77 keyboard paired with the Naga Epic mouse, and it does look like he ran the wires through the desk. I guess while I'm down here, I do have some concerns, like, what on earth is that thing holding up your PS4? Also, did you know there's a hole under it? I will give you some points on creativity, but I would make sure that rip in the middle doesn't get any bigger, otherwise you can say goodbye to your PS4. However, I do like your custom made budget cable raceway. Apparently he made that out of a cardboard box and he painted it in black. When you think about it, this entire setup was actually built on a budget, which is crazy to say. Even the desk was built by him in shop class. This setup could use a bit of spiffing up, but it's a hell of a start for someone your age. Thank you, Macklin, for entering. And that pretty much does it for this episode of Setup Wars. As always, make sure to comment down below on which of these was your favorite setup. And before you head out, make sure to toss a like to show your support. And if you're new here, consider subscribing if I haven't scared you off already. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you very soon in the next one.